Word up. Hello. I want to make one thing abundantly clear from the start of this video. I love Payday. Through its very high highs and its very low lows, I've always had a soft spot for Payday too. No matter how many times I play through the same damn heist, the game has always stood the test of time as one of my favorites. And with Payday 3 on the horizon, I can't wait to see what will come next from the always seemingly struggling yet brilliant and hilarious Swedes over at Overkill. But what about Payday the Heist, the first Payday game? You don't see it brought up that much, even in the Payday community unless someone mentions, hey did you know that blank thing? was in Payday the Heist, of which your response is probably, huh, that's neat. My name's Heiko, and today I want to see if Payday the Heist still holds up nowadays alongside its more successful sequel. I feel like Payday needs no introduction. It's a semi-goofy, semi-serious game about robbing banks, stealing from the feds, and and as popular as Payday is, most people only ever talk about Payday 2. Now this is probably because Payday the Heist is old and not many people are playing it or making content on it. I feel like there's a lot of things Payday the Heist did better over Payday 2 and vice versa. So let's start with the first thing you see when you first boot up the game, the menu. In Payday 2, the menu UI, as of now, is very clean and fairly easy to navigate. Everything may seem complicated to a beginner, but you get used to it quickly. Compare that to Payday the Heist, whose UI is admittedly dated. Small text box against a colorful screen may not have been the best decision. Some options are buried in deep subcategories, and the separate menus for skills, perk decks, weapons, and armor are all foregone for one single linear leveling system. Which is a fresh idea if you're coming back from Payday 2, but far from a welcoming one. This leads me into my next point of interest, the gameplay. Payday 2 is a very fast paced game, with waves of mindless cops and enemies of the sort swarming you from every corner of the map. Granted I haven't gone loud on any difficulty higher than Mayhem, but compared to the easiest difficulty on Payday the Heist, the predecessor's gameplay is much more slow, thought out, and methodical. In Payday 2 I find myself running around at a faster pace, rarely using cover as intended, and completing heists quicker. On the contrary, in Payday the Heist I find myself picking off the opposition while moving from cover to cover. While there is a smaller concentration of enemies, each mindless Stormtrooper can pack a punch and actually take you down. Adding to this, every time a special operative like a shield, taser, cloaker, or dozer shows up, it feels more significant because you can't just easily dispose of them like you can in Payday 2. In Payday the Heist, ammo is a lot more scarce. Kind of. You'll find yourself running out of ammo quicker during assaults, but the flip side is that the quiet time between each assault is a lot longer than Payday 2, allowing you to go out and scrounge for ammo. When it comes to weapons in Payday the Heist, they hit like a fucking truck. Payday 2 can have some amazing gunplay. All the guns look and sound from decent to pretty damn good, and the customization is endless. This is great, but sometimes I find myself feeling like I'm popping heads with a nerf gun. On the other hand, the guns in Payday the Heist really pack a punch. When you line up a perfect headshot with any of the weapons, it looks, feels, and sounds great. The only issue I see is that the selection of weapons in Payday the Heist is very small, which can be either a curse or a blessing depending on your point of view. Along those same lines, let's talk about character. Ah, I need a medic bag. In Payday 2, there are 20 fucking two playable heisters. Now, this may seem like a good thing, right? The more the merrier. More personalities, more dialogue, more interesting, right? Well, when all these characters are added at different times, and with more heists being added along the way, you run into the problem of getting voice actors back into the booth and recording new lines, which costs a lot of time and money, and doesn't always work with everyone's scheduling. To combat this, pretty much every heister just has generic dialogue bereft of personality that can apply to basically any situation, a la Sniper just ate a bullet, I owe you a pint, call me the cloaker smoker. This leaves every non-classic heister feeling somewhat void of personality, and leaves the exposition up to the contractor, whether it be Bane, Locke, Vlad, the Butcher, Jimmy, you name it. The only glimpses you get into a heister's personality is their description, their appearance, and their shallow pool of pager lines that can get very annoying very quick. Sorry about that. I think maybe it's from all the acid I dropped this morning. <laughs> Just kidding. Now when we look at Payday the Heist, the game only contains the original four Payday Gang heisters, Dallas, Chains, Wolf, and Hoxton. Since there were only nine heists released in the game's original lifespan, Overkill was able to write creative and unique dialogue for each heister in each heist, giving them and the game as a whole much more personality. On the topic of personality, let's talk music. Don't act dumb! Now I want to make this one thing abundantly clear before I talk about the soundtracks of these games. I absolutely love the soundtracks of Payday the Heist and Payday 
Payday 2. I think Simon Vicklund composed some of the best and most recognizable music in all of gaming. However, I feel like Payday the Heist had a soundtrack that better fit the game's theme and tone. Well, kind of. Let me explain. See, Payday the Heist soundtrack in total is about an hour long, compared to Payday 2's, which is about three hours long. Except that's just Simon Vicklund's work, not including the work of other artists, especially after Vicklund left Overkill. In comes the problem. In Payday the Heist, the soundtrack was more focused on a grungy and industrial sound. Loud clipping drums, thick bass, crispy yet muddy distorted guitars, and low humming synths make up the majority of the game's soundtrack, with a few more electronic sounding songs and included as well. The thing is, none of these songs deviated from the tone of that gritty atmosphere of a group of four notorious criminals robbing banks, gangs, the feds, and much more. On the contrary, in Payday 2, the soundtrack basically did a 180 from Payday the Heist. The majority of tracks are fast-paced electric songs, with a few occasional gritty industrial songs thrown in. Which, to be fair, does respect the faster nature and gameplay of Payday 2. Vicklin's work in both games fits really well with their respective atmosphere, but the problem in Payday 2 arises when we look outside Vicklin's Work. I'm not saying all the other artists that worked on Payday 2's soundtrack did a bad job. I feel like a lot of their tracks are pretty damn good. It just feels like as time went on and more heists and tracks were added, the music kind of lost direction in which tone it should focus on. This brings me to my next point, tone. You see, I need my Payday 2. Payday the Heist has a very clear-cut tone that I kind of mentioned already. It's very gritty, very serious, very industrial, very orange. And to some extent, Payday 2 at the start of its life kind of carried along the same tone, just blue instead of orange. But then comes the problem when you have a game where it takes robbing the White House just as seriously as Goat Simulator, that is to say, very serious. Payday 2's tone, especially in the present day, bounces around a lot, from comically large spoons to ah! Bane dying in the bad ending. And speaking of robbing the White House in Goat Simulator, Payday the Heist, well, Heist, were somewhat grounded in reality. Somewhat. But Payday 2's heists, well, let me just read a synopsis of a few of them. A heist where you chase down live goats filled with cocaine. A heist where you raid a private military compound to steal several live nuclear warheads for a crazy Russian dude. A heist where you run around a mall doing a fucking cocaine collectathon because that crazy Russian dude's brother in law dressed up as Santa and hid bricks everywhere. And a heist where you sneak onto a private military's cargo plane full of money, launch pallets of money into the fucking sky, skydive out of the plane and then secure all the money on the ground. Along with a lot of the newer characters being wisecracking jackasses, Payday 2's story and tone is more of a long, drawn out, elaborate joke than an actual narrative. Now, all of this isn't to say that I don't love Payday, because I do. I've sunk hundreds of hours into this series and I plan on sinking in hundreds more, especially in the next installment. But in the case of Payday the Heist, it seems like people just don't play it because, well, Payday 2 exists. I had a lot of fun revisiting the first game in the series and it still holds up to some extent. The only issue is most of Payday the Heist content is already in Payday 2, and with Payday 2 constantly being either free or on sale, unlike Payday the Heist, more people are just going to gravitate towards the sequel. It was time for Enterprising. I gathered all the guys in my crew. Mm -hmm. They knew uh -huh. we brought the go on heisting.